faced with an unprecedented crisis. Life as we knew it came to a halt. Borders were closed and people closed their hearts. But we are taking care of each other, fighting the challenges together. We are adapting, innovating, and inspiring each other. We are only as strong as we are united. Anyoseo, 오늘 특히 뿡 행사에 사과를 마케트요. 정말 영광입니다. We will now begin the official ceremony to mark the 4353rd anniversary of the foundation of Korea with the national anthem of Korea. Please welcome Mrs. Benedicta Adum Efua, the winner of this year's Korean Week Festival. Anyoseo, chairman Benny Efua Adum입니다. 오늘 일제방한 나라 위에 애국가를 부를 수 있어서 영광입니다. 감사합니다. Thank you, Ms. Efua, for a great performance. We will now watch a performance by the Korean students in Ghana who will play and sing the national anthem of Ghana.
Well, what a splendid performance. We are sure that their performance made you glass as well. We will now move on to hear from the Excellency Im Chontek, the Ambassador of the Republic of Korea in Ghana. Deliver his welcome remarks. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to celebrate Korean National Day. This is my first Korean National Day in Ghana, but unfortunately, we cannot help holding this year's ceremony virtually due to the still ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. As you may be aware, Koreans celebrate 3rd October every year as a National Foundation Day to mark the founding of the first Korean kingdom more than 4,000 years ago. On the occasion of this special day, I'd like to thank everyone who offered his or her assistance to the embassy in diverse ways throughout the year. Your cordial support helped us fulfill our duties successfully. The very beginning of the bilateral relations between Korea and Ghana dates back to the early 1960s. Around that time, Korean fishermen came to Ghana for tuna fishing in the Gulf of Guinea. The development of bilateral relations remained dormant for a while until official diplomatic ties between the two countries were finally established in 1977. Since then, the two countries have enjoyed friendly relations showing a rapid progress on cooperation in many different sectors. Taking this opportunity, I'd like to highlight a few areas where the bilateral cooperation has greatly enhanced recently. First and foremost, Korea and Ghana have joined hands together in response to ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. With the aim of helping Ghanaian government sustain the health system, ensure the health and safety of the people living in Ghana, the Korean government has gladly offered its support by providing with COVID-19 response items, making donations for vaccine procurement, nurturing public health workforce, as well as running a project for improving community-based primary healthcare system. In terms of economic cooperation, Korea and Ghana have consistently sought to strengthen a mutually beneficial relationship by promoting investment opportunities in both countries. It's believed that the AFCFTA African Continental Free Trade Area, the Secretary of which is proudly based in Accra, will offer yet another opportunity for Korean businesses to have far more access to regional and sub-regional markets. It's in this regard that the two prominent Korean car manufacturers, Hyundai and Kia Motors, are set to establish assembly plants in Ghana by 2022, which would in turn help further boost the economic relations between our two countries. Another key area that Korea has been focusing on is to help build a robust and prosperous agricultural sector in Ghana an ongoing project in the central region to improve the rice value chain system is a tangible example of the Korean government's commitment to assist Ghana in this regard. Such endeavor would hopefully lead to enhancing competitiveness of the agricultural industry and expanding export of agricultural products, as well as ensuring food security in Ghana. Last but not least, Korea and Ghana have been enjoying good relations on the cultural front as well. In particular, our annual Korea Week celebration has become a cherished and anticipated celebration for young Ghanaians. This year's celebration was a remarkable one, witnessing the enthusiasm with which the Ghanaian youth showcased their knowledge and interest in Korea in various fields. I personally found it refreshing to hear and watch participants sing and dance to Korean music as well as enjoy Korean cuisine. With this, I am confident that our cultural cooperation will further deepen down the road. I'd like to conclude by wishing you good health and praying that very soon the pandemic will be over so that we can meet together in person to celebrate the Korean National Day next year. Meanwhile, let us continue to stay safe and strong, follow the COVID-19 protocols, get vaccinated, and keep our fingers crossed for a brighter day. May our friendship and bilateral relations continue to so high. Thank you.
Your Excellency Ambassador Ling Jun Tai, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Distinguished Invited Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is with great pleasure that I represent the government and the people of Ghana on this memorable occasion of the 4,353rd National Foundation Day Anniversary of the Republic of Korea. On behalf of the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, the government and the people of the Republic of Ghana, and in my own name, please accept our sincere congratulations to the government and the people of the Republic of Korea. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this auspicious occasion provides us with yet another unique opportunity to review and strengthen our bilateral cooperation even as the world fights against the global COVID-19 pandemic, which has badly hit global economies, including our two friendly nations. As mentioned by His Excellency the Ambassador, much of the development cooperation between our two countries this year has centered on supporting Ghana's health system to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. The government and the people of Ghana are grateful to the Republic of Korea for its immense support to Ghana's healthcare system through the Korea Foundation for International Healthcare over the years. I wish to express my appreciation to the Korean government for the invaluable support and timely supply of medical items, including PCR machines and personal protection equipment, PPEs, to assist Ghana's fight against the pandemic. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is worth noting that the positive diplomatic engagements between our two countries have culminated in the Republic of Korea allocating some scholarship slots to Ghana through its Korean International Cooperation Agency for capacity building and funding of projects in many sectors including energy, health, agriculture, water and sanitation. I must say that the unwavering commitment and support toward the socio-economic development of Ghana cannot be underestimated. The awards and training programs that we continue to receive from the Korean government do not only contribute to enhance human resource development in Ghana, but also serves as an effective tool for cultural exchanges between our countries. As rightly pointed out by the Amb Ambassador Lin Jang Tai, on the economic front, a number of projects are still ongoing. And so whilst we take stock of the achievements of the Ghana-Korea relations over the years, it is important to explore new areas of cooperation, notably among them being Ghana's desire for Korea to consider the establishment of an automobile industry in the country and to promote trade in an effort to spare economic growth of both countries. Your Excellencies, it is gratifying to note that early this year Ghana witnessed a groundbreaking ceremony for the Korean project to improve the cultivation of rice and its value chain system in the central region of Ghana. Indeed, the government of Ghana intends to expand agriculture through mechanization and the establishment of agro-processing industries. Therefore, we welcome discussions for the revitalization of the Book Nanking agricultural school in Akusi, which is aimed at improving agriculture in the country. With the establishment of the African continental free trade area, there is a huge market for the over 1.2 billion available for Korean government and potential investors in Africa. This development, coupled with the conducive business environment in Ghana, serves as a springboard to access the continental market. In that regard, the government of Ghana is keen on developing more exchanges between Ghanaian companies and those of the Republic of Korea as part of efforts to implement the President's agenda of a Ghana beyond aid. I am very convinced that given the Republic of Korea's advanced knowledge in science and technology, it will play a significant role in supporting the government of Ghana's flagship projects, including the nationwide industrialization agenda, 
which is aimed at creating employment for the teeming youth, reducing poverty, and sustaining economic growth in Ghana. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, finally permit me to invite you all participating virtually to join me in a toast to the continuous good health and well-being of President Moon Jae-in, the government and the people of the Republic of Korea, and to the strong bars of friendship that happily exist between Ghana and Korea. Long live Ghana-Korea relations. And I thank you all for your attention. Now it is time for us to watch a number of video clips showcasing the work of the Korean government this year. Hope you enjoy them. For more than 70 years, the 155 mile long ecological wonder cutting through the middle of the Korean peninsula remained untouched by men. Yet, as calm and tranquil as it may be, the stunning foliage in the demilitarized zone holds the bitter memories of the past war. From her experience, the Republic of Korea is acutely aware that bringing peace to the daily lives of ordinary people is nothing to be taken for granted. The Republic of Korea firmly stands together with the United Nations dedicated to upholding UN's goal to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. The interwoven story of the Republic of Korea and the United Nations began in 1948, when the Republic of Korea received the organization's commitment and assistance in forming a nation in the aftermath of independence. And this strong relationship continues to this day. In 1991, after numerous trials spanning nearly four decades, the Republic of Korea finally became a member of the United Nations. Since joining the United Nations in 1991, the Republic of Korea has been a dynamic and determined member state. You have played a leadership role on many issues of global importance, from peace building to green growth. Over the following 30 years, the Republic of Korea became a reliable supporter and a devoted champion of the United Nations and its core values. Proudly donning the blue helmets of the United Nations, the Republic of Korea played its part in restoring hope and peace to many conflict-affected areas of the world. In the entire process, leaving no one behind has been the core principle of the Republic of Korea. Bearing in mind the generosity and warmth it received from the international community, the Republic of Korea has been more than willing to lend a helping hand to others in need. And now, envisioning a safe and secure world for the future generation, the Republic of Korea is stepping up to serve once again as a non-permanent member in the UN Security Council for the 2024-25 term. The Republic of Korea will continue its leading role in tackling the growing threat of climate change. We will spare no effort in encouraging the international community to stand as one for the future generations in dealing with the emerging new challenges. And we will work closely with the United Nations to realize our shared vision to foster sustainable peace on the Korean Peninsula and bring lasting peace to other regions of the world.
And now with that, the online ceremony has come to its end. We would like to thank you everyone again for joining us today. Thank you very much.